So today is Patriot Day, September 11th, 2021, exactly 20 years to the day since our nation suffered the worst attack from a foreign power on the United States, on our soil, uh, since the Revolutionary War. Uh, p some people would say, well, Pearl Harbor was the worst attack on our, on our soil. Well, technically, Hawaii wasn't a state yet. So when it comes to the attack on the United States, the actual states, 9-11 uh, was the worst attack that we'd seen since the Revolutionary War. But whether it was the worst or the second worst or the fifth worst, it was a bad day. It was a bad day. How many can remember where you were? I, I mean, anybody who was alive back then, they, they all remember. <clears throat> now that happened September 11th, 2001. A month later, in October of 2001, a Republican congressman from New York proposed that we declare September 11th as a national day of mourning. And so they declared September 11th to be Patriot Day. And that first Patriot Day occurred on September 11th, 2002, one year after the attack. So tonight, what I thought we would do as American patriots, we're gonna celebrate this awesome nation that we live in. Amen? Amen? Amen. So let's talk about patriots. Webster's Dictionary defines a patriot as this, a person who loves, supports, and defends his or her country and its interests with devotion. Amen. So I want to break this definition down a little bit. A patriot is someone who loves his country, his or her country. Now, in order to love something, that presumes that there's something about it that's worth loving. There is something about our country that is worth loving. Amen? The United States of America is the greatest nation on the face of the planet. Amen? Amen? No, we are not perfect. No, we do not lead the world in every single area of life. Yes, we have many errors in our history. We've made a lot of mistakes. But despite the errors, despite our imperfections, when you put the total package of who we are together, we have more to offer in this country than any other society on earth. That's right. When you look at the total package. Now, there are other places on earth that offer better educational opportunities than some of the places we have here in the United States. There are other places on earth that might have better health care than we do. There are other places on earth that offer certain things that we don't. But here's my question, at what cost? At what cost? You know, people love to talk about, I hear this all the time, people talk about the health care system in Sweden. Oh, Sweden has great health care. But did you also realize that Sweden has an income tax rate of about 53%? And a sales tax rate of 25%. So when it comes to the money you're making and the money you're spending, the nation is taking 78% of your money. Well, I would say if a nation is taking 78% of my money, I better have some good health care. Amen? Our nation was founded on a very, very biblical principle. And I've been talking about this principle for the last couple of weeks. I didn't realize that it was going to segue into tonight's message. But our nation was founded on a biblical principle, and the principle is this. If you give people the freedom and the opportunity to create their own future, if you get out of their way, if you create an environment where people can create business, where they can create commerce, they will prosper on their own. If the government will just get out of their way. Now, there's another mindset in our modern society that's basically the opposite of this. And that mindset is, if you create an environment where people are dependent on the government, the government will provide all of their needs. And that's perfectly fine for the government to provide all of your needs as long as you're willing to surrender your freedom. I'm not willing to surrender my freedom. You know, the whole reason, we talked about this on Tuesday, the whole reason that God set the Israelites free from 400 years of Egyptian slavery 
was to give the Israelites the opportunity to create their own future. In, in Egypt, they worked hard and Egypt got the benefit. God says, I don't want you working for somebody else anymore. I'm going to allow you to work for yourself. I'm going to give you your own land, your own business, your own farm, your own way of prospering. And you get to keep all the profit. Amen. I'm giving you your own opportunity to build. I'm giving you your own opportunity to create. Israel, I'm giving you your own opportunity to prosper. I told you the other night, people often quote the verse in Deuteronomy that says, I've given you the power to get wealth. But the Bible doesn't say I've given you the power to get wealth. It says I've given you the power to create wealth. There's a big difference between getting something and creating something. There's a big difference between receiving something or accumulating something and being able to create something. God didn't give the Israelites the, the ability to accumulate wealth or to gather wealth. He gave them the ability to create something that would generate wealth. That's powerful. Do you know what you need in order to create? You need freedom. You can't create without freedom. You need independence. You need the ability to work unfettered. That's what America is. It's the ability to work unfettered. Now, as this says, Webster says, a patriot is somebody who loves his country. Folks, I love this country. I love this country because this country gives me the freedom to create. It gives me the freedom to build. It gives me the freedom to enjoy the fruit of my work, the fruit of my labor. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes that the ability to enjoy the fruit of your work, that's a gift of God. The ability for you to enjoy the fruit of what you created, that's a gift of God. God told the Israelites, you will be blessed in your land. I will bless the work of your hands. I will bless your vine. I will bless your fig tree. I will bless your flocks. What was he saying? God is saying, I'm going to give you something that you can use to create your own future. You're not going to have to depend on anybody else. You don't need to depend on your government. You need to depend on God. God's saying, you need to depend on me and my ability to lead you and guide you and put things in your hand that you can use to prosper yourself and to further the kingdom. We have the freedom in this country to create a business. We have the freedom to build a church. We have the freedom to invent something and keep the profits for ourselves if we invent it. Did you know that in many nations you can't do those things? There's many nations where you can't own a business. There's many nations that you can't freely create and build your own church. And there are many nations that if you invent something, they don't allow you to keep the profit of it. It goes to the state. It goes to, to, to that nation. It goes to the government. Did you know in Cuba, you're not allowed to own more than one business? This is 90 miles away, folks. 90 miles off the coast of Florida. In Cuba, you're not allowed to own uh, uh, more than one business that's the same kind of business. I saw a documentary about a year ago where there was a couple in Cuba. They had started a bakery, and they made more money selling cookies out of their bakery than they made from their previous professions. It was a husband and wife. They decided to go into business for themselves because they wanted to take the cap off of their wealth-making potential. And they made more money as bakers than they did in their previous pr professions. The previous professions, they were dentists. They made more money owning a bakery than they did the two of them being dentists. Because as dentists, they got paid by the government. And they did well with their bakery. But they were really disappointed when they found out that they couldn't open up a second bakery. They're not allowed to. America takes the limits off of your potential. That's why we have so many people in this country who are millionaires and billionaires. Why? Because 
America gave them the, 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 the ability to take the limits off of their potential, and they put their potential to work. Amen. There's a lot of potential in this room, folks. And the kingdom wants you to put your potential to work. And America gives you the right and the privilege to do so. The problem today is that America is also so blessed that it can afford, at least in the short term, it can afford to give people handouts. And we're quickly finding in our society today, people would rather live on handouts than go out and fulfill their potential. After COVID, after COVID shut everything down, people got used to staying home from church and they got used to staying home from work and they got used to receiving a check from the government every week. And now it's hard to put people back to work. That's why Taco Bell is offering $500 sign-on bonuses. Who would have ever thought you'd get a $500 sign-on bonus at a fast food place? Virtually every business you go into today has a now hiring sign. Every store, every restaurant, people are understaffed. People don't want to work. But America was not originally created to appeal to freeloaders. America was originally created to appeal to people who wanted the freedom to create their own future. Amen? So a patriot is somebody who loves their country. A patriot is also somebody who supports their country. Folks, I'm definitely in support of our country. But I support this country for what it was originally founded for. I don't support what many people are trying to turn this country into. They're trying to turn it into a socialistic society of freeloaders. And that doesn't work. Margaret Thatcher said, the problem with socialism is that you will eventually run out of other people's money. So I support this great nation of ours. You know, folks, there's a reason that people from all over the globe, every corner of this planet, they're flocking here. They're coming here. They're not flocking to Sweden. They're not flocking to Japan. They're not flocking to Canada. Not at the rate that they're coming here. You know, I've seen uh, videos, maybe some of you have seen these uh, as well on Facebook or on YouTube. I've seen videos where foreigners are walking through an American grocery store and they're in tears walking through one of our stores. Why? Because we have half a dozen different kinds of milk. We have dozens of different kinds of cheese. We got five different brands of toilet paper. You want quilted? You want two-ply? You want a double roll? You want a triple roll? We've got choices here. I think Americans sometimes have become so accustomed to the blessings that we have in this country that sometimes we forget how rare it is what we have. What we have is rare on the earth. And that's why it angers me when I see ignorant people talk about how terrible the U.S. is. Especially when it's ignorant Americans that are talking about it. They say, well, you know, I, I want to go live somewhere else. Really? Do you really? Well, I'll tell you what, go try it, and I guarantee you'll be back in three months. You're not going to find it better than, than you find it here. Amen? There's a reason that so many other cultures around the world are becoming westernized. That's what they call it, westernized. What they're really saying is they're becoming Americanized. Westernized. You know, they, they, they have western taste in food and entertainment and music and uh, architecture and design and clothing. They're becoming westernized. You know why? They see what we are and they see what we enjoy and they want it. So if they can't get it by coming here, they'll try to create it over there. I told you a couple of weeks ago, Pastor Wilmer from Honduras, he came here and spoke on a Tuesday night. And I had been promising him for about three years to take him to a gun range. 
because in Honduras, they're not allowed to own guns over there. And a few years ago, he was here, and I don't know how it came into uh, conversation, but he brought up the subject of guns, and he asked me, he says, do you own a gun? I said, yeah, I own a gun. And uh, he goes, well, what do you have? And I started telling him, and, and he goes, you own more than one gun? And I said, yeah, I've, I've, got, I've got a few. And uh, it, was, it was just amazing to him. Because <laughs> Pastor Wilmer, everything is amazing. <clears throat> but that was a foreign concept to him because they don't own guns in Honduras. And so he told me, he said, I would love to, to, to shoot a gun. And, and he, he came for one trip and we couldn't make it happen. And then he came for another trip and the gun range wouldn't allow him to shoot there because Honduras was on their no shoot list. And so uh, I had to find another uh, uh, gun range for us to go to. And we finally made that happen a few weeks ago. We got to the end of our time at the gun range and he loved it, he absolutely loved it. But he said these words, he goes, I can see why Americans live longer. And I thought, well, where are you going with this? And he said, Americans live so blessed. And he said, you guys can do whatever you want to do. You have so many freedoms, so many privileges. He says, I, I can't do this in my country. So many people in my country just live under the oppression of, uh, of poverty. We don't have freedoms in our country. He says, I, I can see why Americans live longer. He said, I can see why I'm younger than you, but I have more gray hair than you do. And I said, well, you have more hair, period, than I do. So, folks, I support this country. I support what the founding fathers of this nation stood for. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now, notice, they didn't say we'd achieve happiness. But by God, we have the right to pursue it. We have the right to go after it without the government trying to tie our hands. Amen. Let me ask you something. When tragedy hits other nations, earthquakes, hurricanes, volcanoes, tsunamis, natural disasters, when tragedy hits other nations, who comes to their aid? We do. Time and time and time and time again. They call on us. But when tragedy hits our soil, who comes to our aid? Just about nobody. Normally, nobody. And the reason for that is we are so blessed in this country, we've created an environment where we can stand on our own two feet. And when we get knocked down, we can get back up again. Because we've given ourselves the freedom and the capacity to, to pull ourselves together and get back up again when, when, when we fall down. We can help other people in all occasions because we can stand on our own two feet. That's biblical. Yes. Second Corinthians chapter 9, Paul said this, God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. You will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. That's America. America has been made rich in every way. And because of this, America has been more than generous on every occasion. Why? Because we can be. Because we're blessed. Most other nations on this globe, they can barely keep their heads above water. And therefore, they can't help even if they wanted to. But we can stand on our own two feet because God has blessed us. Amen. Eighty years ago, a crazy genocidal maniac in Germany tried to take over Europe. He wasn't a threat to us. He was a threat to them. But what did we do? We went over there. We, we joined our allies and we defeated him in a huge world war. But what did we do after the war? We stayed behind and we cleaned up the mess. I can't even get church folks to stay after a meal and clean up the mess. 
Now, seriously though, we went over to Europe. We didn't cause it, right? We didn't start it, but by God, we finished it. And when it was all over, by all means, they could not have won without our help. By all means, we could have said at the end, hey, Europe, you're welcome, and we're not even going to send you a bill. But we didn't do that. What did we do? We stayed behind, and we helped Europe rebuild. We didn't owe them a thing, but we stayed because we could. America's model of government, our strength, our power, our, our wealth, have inspired other nations to try to adopt this form of government. The problem is, this form of government doesn't work if people don't want it. And that's part of the problem that we're finding with Afghanistan. We tried to establish a democracy in a, in a society that didn't want democracy. You, you need to understand, these people, they've lived in a tribal culture for thousands of years. They don't know any better. They don't know anything else. And so if you can't establish a functional democracy in 20 years, that's not your fault. It's not our fault that, that, that we couldn't establish it. They don't understand it. And how can you want something if you don't understand how it works? Our founding fathers knew what they wanted. You know why they knew it? It's because they knew what didn't work. Tyranny doesn't work. Dictatorships don't work. Socialism doesn't work. Communism doesn't work. The founding fathers had a God-ordained wisdom, and they understood human nature. So they created a governmental system that would make the best out of our flaws and our strengths. They understood human nature. One of our flaws is that humans love free stuff. But one of our strengths is that humans love to enjoy the rewards of their own labor. So the founders created a system that would reward labor and discourage freeloading. A system where the government would get out of the way of free enterprise. And what did that create as a result? America has the greatest economy, the greatest technology, the greatest innovation, the strongest military, the greatest standard of living on the planet. Why? Because the government got out of our way. So yes, I support this country. I'm a patriot. I love this country and I support this country. I support what the founders were trying to create. I support our Constitution. I support our Bill of Rights. I support our founding documents and you should too. Why? Because these things demonstrate an understanding of human nature and they make concessions for it. Human nature makes it necessary for us to have the right to defend ourselves. That's why we have a second amendment. Human nature makes that necessary. The founders understood that. Human nature makes it necessary for us to have the right and the freedom to assemble. Human nature makes it necessary for us to have the right to free speech. Why are these things important? Because the right to defend yourself, the right to assemble, the right to free speech, these are things that keep evil at bay. When you shut the mouths of people, when you take away their right to assemble, when you tie the hands of the press, when you don't give people the right to bear arms, you're giving evil a license to flourish. The founders understood that. Now, this definition says a patriot is a person who loves, supports, and defends his country and its interests. Now, when you say the word defend, what do you think of most of the time? Military, right? People think about picking up a weapon and warding off an enemy. But defending something can also mean speaking in defense of something. That's what a defense attorney does, right? They don't pick up a weapon. 
but they speak in defense of something or somebody. I think one of the biggest issues that we've had in recent years is that we have a silent majority of people, a silent majority who believes in traditional, constitutional, family-based, conservative Christian values. They're a majority, but they're silent. While a loud and boisterous minority of twisted, wicked, confused, ignorant, uninformed people get all of the attention in the media and in entertainment. Yeah. Folks, you don't need to necessarily pick up a weapon to defend America. But it wouldn't hurt if you'd speak up once in a while. For one thing, Paul told us that as Christians, we are called to speak the truth in love. Ephesians chapter 4, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ. We need to speak the truth. That's scriptural. But here's another thing I want you to consider. Speaking up lets other people know that they're not alone. Make no mistake about it tonight. There are more people in this nation who stand for Christian values than those who don't. We are not the minority. The problem is Christians aren't making enough noise. We need to speak up. You know, one of the things that I love to do on Facebook, I, I don't like to get into politically charged discussions on Facebook. Because for one thing, whenever you get into an argument with somebody, you're not going to change their mind. So it becomes a distraction. It becomes a waste of time. And it just becomes noise. It just becomes an argument. But one of the things that I love to do is I'll go on Facebook and when I see people that are engaged in a discourse, if I see something that I agree with, I like it. Because if you can go through a, a thread and the people that are defending truth, de defending Christianity, de defending morality, defending good values, if they know that other people like what they're saying, they'll know, hey, maybe I'm not a minority. Maybe there are a bunch of people out there that feel the same way that I do. Amen? You don't necessarily have to post anything. Just let the person who did post know that they're not alone. Amen? You turn on the TV and you're inundated with anti-Christian, anti-family, anti-American, pro-abortion, pro-socialism, pro-LGBTQ agenda, pro-immorality. Why? Because the majority of people who run secular media and entertainment are not Christians, and therefore they do not have a godly, scriptural-based moral center. So they have the biggest voice because they control the media. So if you turn on the television, you might think that they represent most of America. They don't. They don't. America is still a moral nation. There are more of us than there are of them. The problem is we don't make enough noise in defense of our country, in defense of our values. They do their best to try to persuade people that the majority of Americans want to discard the Constitution, that the majority of Americans want America to become socialistic, they want Christianity to fade away, they want sexual immorality to become mainstream and to become normalized, but America by and large does not want this. Don't buy the lie. So a patriot defends his country and its interests. Don't be afraid to defend your country. Don't be afraid to defend the gospel. Don't be afraid to stand up and speak for your values and to speak for your country. It amazes me sometimes when I go online, I will see videos and I'll see articles that are written by foreign media personalities who speak up for America sometimes better than Americans do. They don't have the same agenda that the American media has. So they will actually stand up and they'll speak the truth. They don't see America, 
They see America for what America was intended to be. And they value that. They don't want to see America turned into what they know already won't work. Because it doesn't work because they've already seen it not work. It's, it's amazing to see foreigners who have a better grasp of, on American society than the American media does. Now, speaking of defense, some patriots have gone to the next level of defending our country by being willing to pick up a weapon and stand at post. I am praying that our current civil unrest doesn't build to the point that we're going to have to physically defend America against other Americans. I'm praying against that. But the dark is getting darker. The ignorant are getting more ignorant. The divide is becoming increasingly more pronounced. So my prayer is that in order to thwart this divide, my prayer is that the silent majority will begin to speak up and we can hold evil at bay with our mouths instead of our fists. Yeah. With words instead of weapons. Now the last part of this definition, it says it's a person who loves, supports, and defends his or her country and its interests with devotion. Everyone say devotion. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, verse 42, that the early church devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to eating meals together, and to prayers. The early church was devoted. And because of this, because of the early church's devotion, persecution didn't stop them. Imprisonment, torture, executions, None of those things hindered the devotion of the early church. None of those things stopped them. The early church literally changed the course of humanity's direction. And it started with just 120 people. 120 people literally changed the course of humanity. And now Christianity numbers in the billions. It's the largest religion on earth. Wars have been fought over it. Nations have been founded on it. Empires have risen and fallen because of it. Because of a movement that started with 120 devoted people. What gave Christianity the power to move earth? Devotion. America is worth your devotion. The ideals of our founders are worth your devotion. The principles that are spelled out in our Constitution are worth your devotion. Now, I want you to think about this for a moment. 20 years ago today, a group of people attacked us on 9-11. They had no concept of the ideals that we're talking about tonight. They have no concept of democracy. They had no concept of free society. They've never lived it, so they didn't value it. They've never experienced it, so they had no appreciation for it. Think about this for a moment. 20 years ago today, what did they attack? They attacked the World Trade Center, and they attacked the Pentagon. They attacked the center of our wealth and the center of our military strength. They understand wealth and military strength. That's what they attacked. They didn't attack our education system. They didn't attack our, our health care system. They don't have a concept about that. They don't understand that. They understand the power of wealth. They understand the power of military might. They understand money. They understand fists. And that's what they attacked. They didn't attack us in order to kill thousands of people. If you wanted to kill thousands of people, don't do it by flying an airplane into a building before the office day has opened. They didn't do it to kill people. If they wanted to kill people, they could have flown an airplane into a baseball stadium. That would have killed people. 
They could have flown an airplane into a football stadium. That would have killed a lot of people. They could have flown an airplane into a rock concert or a Trump rally. Because if they flew into a Biden rally, they'd kill dozens of people. Seriously, though, the people who attacked us have zero appreciation for American values. And that's why I believe it was a mistake for us to try to shove democracy down their throats over the past 20 years. It's cost the American taxpayers over a trillion dollars in the past 20 years to try to establish a democracy in Afghanistan. And a few weeks ago, in one fell swoop, all of those efforts are completely done away with. And we have billions of dollars in American equipment that are now in the hands of the Taliban. You can't give people what people don't want. Now, America has often been called the great experiment. How many have ever heard that term used before regarding America? The great experiment. The reason America is called the great experiment is that our form of government had never fully been tried before. Our government is an experiment, but I believe it was a God-ordained experiment. It's an experiment that was established on scriptural principles by God-fearing men. And that's why it works. When I say that I'm an American patriot, what I mean is that I'm an American who believes in American values for America. Now, if other nations want to adopt the same values, good for them, more power to them, but I don't want to pay for their experiment. Amen? America doesn't work because of our Declaration of Independence. It doesn't work because of our Constitution or our Bill of Rights. America works because of the Holy Word of God that those documents are based upon. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are biblical concepts. And they were biblical concepts long before Thomas Jefferson wrote them in the Declaration of Independence. America works because America's God is the Lord. Psalm chapter 33, verse 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Blessed is the nation whose God is Jehovah. That's what that word is in the original Hebrew. America is not blessed because of our Constitution. America is not blessed because of our Declaration of Independence. America is not blessed because of three separate but equal branches of government. America is blessed because our God is the Lord. And as long as God continues to be our Lord, America will continue to be blessed. I believe wholeheartedly in the law of sowing and reaping. I hope everybody in this room does too. America has far too much seed in the ground for us to lose our blessing. We've sown a lot of seed. No nation on earth has done more to spread the gospel and to spread the principles of the kingdom than America has. No nation has. So all of these people out there that are saying, well, America's reserved for judgment, they can't see the big picture. Yes, I understand that our world is becoming a more godless society. I get that. Yes, the dark is getting darker. Yes, the ignorant are getting more ignorant. But America still leads the world in its effectiveness for spreading the gospel. So even if America was reserved for judgment, I guarantee you, you and I are not. Because we're children of the king. We live under a different government. Now I have traveled over almost every part of this country. The only part of the country I've never been to, I've never been to the Northeast, I've never been to New England. But America is one of the most beautiful, most vast, most varied environments in the world. You can drive through America, you can see the plains of the Midwest, not a tree in sight. You can go a little farther west and you can see the mountains of the Rockies. You can see the deserts and the mesas, the plateaus of the Southwest. And if that's too hot for you, you can go up to see the frozen tundra of Alaska. And if you get too cold, you can visit the tropics in Hawaii and tropical areas of Florida. We have great metropolitan areas like New York City, Chicago, Los Angeles. 
If that's too busy for you, too fast-paced, we've got rural farm country where you can grow everything from corn, wheat, and potatoes to cotton, oranges, and sugar. We have industry, uh, in, industrial cities like Detroit where they make cars, Pittsburgh where they mill steel, and Silicon Valley where they make computer chips. And America has a lot of homegrown entertainment like New Orleans jazz. Or you can head up to Western Tennessee for some Memphis blues. Or you can go up to Detroit to the Motor City for Motown. And if that music isn't heavy enough for you, you can go to the West Coast and listen to some Seattle grunge. <laughs> if you love stage plays and musicals, we got Broadway in New York City. And of course, we've got decades and decades worth of movies made in Hollywood. We've got entertainment venues like Disney World, Las Vegas, Branson, Missouri. You can snow ski in Aspen, Colorado. You can surf in Hawaii. You can dog sled in Alaska. Or you can ride the whitewater rapids in the Colorado River. If you like hunting and fishing, we've got you covered. You can bass fish in Lake Okeechobee. You can hunt huge deer in the cornfields of the Midwest. You're not going to find a deer like that here in Florida. You can catch a marlin off the coast of Hawaii. In America, you can pan for gold in Alaska. You can dig for oil and natural gas in Texas. You can drive a car through a tree in the redwood forests of California. In America, you can swim in two oceans. You can also swim in the Gulf of Mexico, which, by the way, is not an ocean. So you Yankees need to stop calling it the ocean. It is a gulf. Amen. And if you like salt water, but you don't want to swim in the ocean or the gulf, you can swim in the Great Salt Lake uh, uh, in Utah. Actually, you can't swim in it. You pretty much swim on it. Because all that salt makes you really buoyant. And if you don't want to swim in salt water, you'd rather swim in fresh water, you can swim, boat, and fish in some of the most beautiful rivers, lakes, and ponds on earth. Did you know that you can travel from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, to Cincinnati, Ohio, to New Orleans, Louisiana, to St. Paul, Minnesota, to Kansas City, Kansas, to Omaha, Nebraska, to Bozeman, Montana, entirely by water? Did you know that? You can go to all those cities I just mentioned and never set foot on land. And you do it by three rivers. The Ohio River, the Mississippi River, and the Missouri River. And they're all interconnected. You can go to all those cities and never set foot on water. You can visit the Badlands and Mount Rushmore in South Dakota. Or you can go a little farther west and visit Old Faithful in Wyoming and see Yellowstone National Park. You can visit the Grand Canyon in Arizona. Or if you're looking for a more man-made wonder, you can go to the top of the Gateway Arch in St. Louis. I've been there, took my family there. I've also been to a grand city called Washington, D.C. where you can see all of the uh, wonderful historic buildings there and where our government works, but sometimes where it doesn't work. <laughs> in Washington, D.C., they have the National Mall but if the National Mall isn't your speed, you can also visit the world's largest shopping mall in uh, Minnesota, the Mall of America. Speaking of Minnesota, you can visit Minnesota, don't you know? Or you can go to Boston with your buddy Mike and you can park the car in Harvard Yard. <laughs> or you can be fitting to have some cornbread and sweet tea in Savannah tell you what. Or you can be like a valley girl from California. Like, oh my God. Oh. And you can do all of these things without having to show any papers every time you cross a state border. You don't have to go through customs. You have a constitutional right to travel. You have the freedom to create your own future. You have the freedom to create the life that you want to live. So don't you dare tell me that America was not based on Christian principles. 
The only reason that people think America is not based on Christianity is that they've forgotten that Christianity had these principles in operation 1,700 years before America was ever founded. Right. America truly is America the Beautiful. Amen. She's worthy of our patriotic love. She's worthy of our patriotic support. She's worthy of our patriotic defense. And she's worthy of our patriotic devotion. There's a song that says, America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Now, I know those words sound corny, but those words have lasted the test of time because those words are true. God has shed his grace on us. God has graced us. God has blessed us. God has empowered us. God has strengthened us. God has provided for us. God has protected us. So apparently, God himself thinks America's worth it. Yeah. Well, Pastor Heath, this wasn't a very theological message tonight. No, it wasn't. And you know, that's the wonderful thing about living in America. Because if it wasn't for the ideals of this great nation, I wouldn't have the right to choose what I can or can't speak about from this pulpit. I can be as deep or as shallow as I want to be because nobody dictates to me what I get to preach. Every once in a while, folks, I think we need to stop and think about how blessed we truly are. We are blessed as Americans. So with patriotic gratefulness, I thank God that I was born in the greatest nation on this earth. Amen? Can we take... 15 seconds and give God great praise for the nation that we live in. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the freedom that we have. Thank you for the, for the benefits that we have, the privileges that we have as Americans. Thank you, Lord. We bless you and praise you tonight. Somebody shout amen. 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 Hi, I'm Heath. And I'm Louise. And we want to thank you so much for watching this video. Faith Life Worship Center in Naples, Florida is a Bible-believing, spirit-filled, non-denominational church. If you live in Southwest Florida and you're looking for a good church with a fun and energetic contemporary worship experience, awesome children and youth ministries, and a great family atmosphere, we'd love to see you at one of our services really soon. Go to faithlifeworshipcenter.com to learn more about our church, watch other messages online, check out our store, or support our ministry financially. Please take a few seconds to like this video and subscribe to our channel. You can also find us on social media. We hope that you'll watch other messages online, but what we really want is to see you in person at Faith Life Worship Center. Hope to see you soon. Bye. Bye.